Dr. Webb uh, kind of encouraged me to, to stay with with an archaic collection and pick up archaic, uh, look for archaic sites and look for archaic records because there was so much being done in mound building uh, cultures of people excavating mounds, archaeologists excavating mounds and digging pottery and, and getting all of those nice beautiful things out of those mounds and he wanted me to stay with that, that hard stuff that was the hard lithics, to find. And, and the lithics he wanted and you paleontology to paleontology and all of that sort of thing, mm -hmm. which I did. If I find something interesting, I call Dr. Webb, and of course he and I would, would go look at it and look over it. And that's how come I, I found a John Pierce site and began to pick up a Sam Tree Sports. And I thought to myself, there's a sure a lot of Sam Tree sites I find it showing up here on the service. So I called Dr. Webb, and, and he came out to the John Pierce site, and uh, we began to walk over that thing. I began to show him where I was picking these things up. And, and lo and behold, he began to pick them up. He saw them. He picked up uh, some that day, and I picked up some more that day. So we decided on a, a, a area to excavate. And we started the very next week. We uh, surveyed it and everything and, and marked off squares. We dug 490 squares, five mm -hmm. foot squares, uh, anywhere from uh, two feet deep to six inches deep. Uh, and uh, it, it sounds sound like that's a lot of digging, but when you start digging uh, five, 490 squares and sifting every bit of it, that's a lot of work. And it was, uh, did you have other help besides uh, Joel Shawn and Dr. Webb? The only, or? The only one I had uh, to help me much was, uh, was Jose Pierce. He was the son of the property owner there, and of course he was a grown man. And, uh, a black man, and he, I would dig and he would sift. I would dig and he would sift, and uh, he'd hear something rattling in that sifter while he'd always holler, you know. But a lot of the times, uh, it never made it to the sifter. I would uncover it and would see it, you know, uh, digging with a trowel in that in that square. It didn't dig with a shovel. We just uh, get the topsoil off, and then from there on, go on down with a, dig with a trowel. Now, were they found in caches together, no, or were they, they, were, they were, spread they just, out? They were spread out. They weren't in caches. We never did find uh, more than two or three together. But there were some squares that would have more than others, and uh, there'd be some squares that had more tools than others. So it, it, just, it just varied from square to square. Some squares didn't have anything, but most of them did. And it wasn't unusual to find a, a, a paleon point, of course, I wasn't surprised to find a bin up on that uh, hill like that, overlooking that bottom, and that was a good ideal place for a good hunting area initially, which may have been why it was established possibly as an as an early hunting camp by the paleo or archaic type. It was it was decided by Dr. Webb that it was a camp uh, for paleo people, and mm -hmm. they they had uh, they had camped there for a while, and maybe for. Uh, two or three weeks, maybe two or three months they had camped there. And that's the reason there was so many uh, points and small tools, stuff like that. Now uh, Paleo Indian, did. we're talking 6000 BC, somewhere yeah, in there? Somewhere yeah. along that with uh, with the San Matrice people. And it was with a lot of the Paleo Indians with Clovis and uh, Scotch Bluff and uh, uh, Meserve and all of those people, just, they older. Mm -hmm. The San Matrice was kind of a turn transitional point from coming out of the Paleo period into the Archaic period. And uh, uh, but we find a lot of San Patrice in this area. But the only real true San Patrice site that we know of, no other in true truth was the San uh, the, the John, the John Pierce, Pierce site. site. Mm -hmm. It was uh, the Wolf site in Texas maybe, but uh, that's the only one we know of in the state of Louisiana that's been found. That uh, and were, the others are just sur were surface collections essentially, and really not not an organized site the way the John Pierce site no, was. No, we, no, John Pierce site was. Well, we went in and surveyed it and, uh, and and scientifically excavated that site. Mm -hmm. That's the only one I know of. It's been in, in, in this part of the country in in, mm -hmm. in Louisiana. It's mm -hmm. been scientifically uh, surveyed and scientifically excavated with the John Pierce site. How long did you? How long did it take to do the excavation? How long were you in the field? I think we started about sixty-seven or sixty-eight, and uh, it was in the seventies when we stopped. 
Who kept the field notes? I Who did. kept the logs? I so, kept the log. Mm -hmm. And that was a daily log? That was a daily log. Uh, if, I, if I excavated uh, three squares, uh, each square was described and what was found in those squares. If there was a, a feature in there, uh, like a rodent run or a post hole or whatever mm -hmm. uh, in that square, it was described in the location and uh, the points was described where they were found face down or sideways or whatever was the position that it was found in. Most of us was, was uh, face down and laying around on clay caps. That's very complicated when you're talking 490 squares. Do you remember how many objects came from the site that you that no, I, had to be cataloged? About 8,000. Yeah. So now the road. talk about the significance of this find to Louisiana. How how significant is this, this I think it's a significant site. find because it's a paleo site and, and it's, it's a pure site and uh, uh, it's one of the only sites that has been estimated that we could consider a pure cemetery site.